Hey everyone, welcome back to our archetypical series AI Chatter. This is episode two. Uh, as you can see, my eyes look ridiculous. Uh, and I wanted to stand true to doing this every week though. Uh, I, I am fighting a lovely case of conjunctivitis and I apologize for how hideous this looks. So for the listeners this time, lucky you, you don't have to see this. Uh, <laughs> well, welcome back. And I, something I want to do this week, obviously I didn't do it last week, uh, is actually let Ken and Marty give a little bit of an introduction. So uh, Ken and Marty, how about you guys give uh, give us a quick 30 second, who you are, a, a quick quick uh, background. You can fight over who goes first. Sure, I'll go. I'm Ken. I am an, a, an econom a reformed academic economist and have been in data science tech for, gosh, a long time now. And uh, Marty, go for it. Hi, Marty Galp. Uh, I've been in data science, dear God, it's been almost 30 years. Um, I grew up through the Air Force as an ops research analyst and then retired and did uh, data science in the commercial sector for the last decade or so. Perfect. Appreciate it. All right, let's dive into the topic. It's I, it's Marty's favorite one to <laughs> intro it. He's a big Swifty. No. <laughs> Taylor Swift, though. Um, Specifically, as a lot of people saw all over the internet uh, and articles that came out, there was a, a unfortunate moment of explicit leaks of deep fakes of Taylor Swift that got to the point that uh, on X, you couldn't even search her name. One of the posts supposedly got like 45 million views. Like it's just unfortunate. And ultimately, I, I do feel bad that like even no matter how popular somebody can be and even like polarizing of you either love her or you can't stand her. Uh, I, I hate to see that happen to anybody. Uh, so more specifically, want to talk about that topic of, of deep fakes uh, with, with that happening. Like how do deep fakes even work exactly? Like wh what's the technology that enables their creation? Yeah, let's, I guess let's first take the, the term deep fake and, and call it what it is. It's, it's generative AI, right? It's, it's generative AI, often in form of video, and in, in, I'm guessing this case, I didn't know about it until this morning. But, you know, but, um, and uh, um, you know, it, generative AI can be used to do lots of different things. It can be, you know, borderline creative, uh, and it can be, um, you know, in in this case, it can be used to uh, uh, merge together some things that sort of potentially look look alike um and um i'm guessing that's what happened here um marty you want to take it a step further yeah i mean it, it's like the old days of photoshop you know you'd say hey you know uh, my crazy cousin is in the christmas picture i want to photoshop him out and so you can do that what you used to do in a dark room now you do on a computer and now you have yeah. gen ai that can do it even better and a lot it, it exposes it to the to the masses and i think what happened with Taylor is kind of like what you see in the the revenge business where, you know, boyfriends will put stuff out on their ex-girlfriends or vice versa. And you take Taylor's head and you put it on a different body or you do something like that. I mean, and unfortunately, generative AI is making this really, really easy to do. Um, most AI art platforms like Mid Journey or those kinds of things, they won't allow you to create explicit content. But come on, there's yeah. probably plenty of other sources out there that will be more than happy to allow you to create that. I mean, frankly, that industry led a lot of the computer advancement and streaming and you know online storage technologies. And so I guess we're not shouldn't be terribly surprised if this yeah. is what I think it is uh, that uh, that that they're they're sort of active in the in the deep deep fake or generative AI space. You know, another thing that's kind of important to to remember about deep fake, and I guess is the reason why we call it something different than generative AI, is that it's blending multiple mediums together, right? It's not hard to, uh, to you know, make video that looks like somebody else, make audio that looks like somebody else, probably generate a bunch of other content that is in support of that new asset. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a multi-factor identification version of generative AI. If, so if you wanted to create something very convincing, you'd make it convincing on a bunch of different dimensions, which probably Mitchell leads you to some of your next questions, I would guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious on, there's obviously these 
individual risks for somebody as popular as Taylor Swift, but like, what are the the business risks that companies have with with this deep fake technology being as not only impressive somewhat as it can be, but kind of accessible yeah. at a at a very low cost for for some people to be able to access this kind of technology uh, at some level. I mean, if you think about it, you, you could deep fake Elon Musk saying something negative about Tesla and it tanks their stock, you know, yeah. before some people find out. Um, I thought there was a story about that happening to Zuckerberg a couple of years ago where he said he there was a deep fake about him saying something and it did affect um, their company. I mean, if you're if you use your voice print, your facial um, features as a security method, as a multi-factor association, you know, you can deep fake that and maybe break into things. Uh, we all have phones, iPhones or Androids that use our face to unlock it. I mean, you could deep fake that. Um, it, it's like, it, it, again, it's the old fashioned lift someone's fingerprints from a glass and now you can use their fingerprints to open a lock. Same idea. Yeah. It's happening. It's there's there's nothing new under the sun. They're just exactly it's, it's a retread yeah. of an old idea using more modern technology. That's right. Yeah, I saw there was one even in 2020. So like we've come a long way a lot with generative AI, but uh, there was an audio deep fake that was used to steal 35 million from a Hong Kong bank. Um, and so it, it's just and I I saw there was uh, even during the Ukraine Russia. Uh, a war going on there was like deep fakes of Zelensky being played over in Russia of him surrendering That's, and vice versa from I Putin and it's like it's it's crazy how much it can be used on that political side it does make me nervous that it can also be used to like oh that's actually a deep fake i didn't actually say that like like they can people can kind of use that as a cop out <laughs> uh, around these that things. has been that has been done especially um in politics when you say something that after the fact, you go, oh, maybe that wasn't the best thing to say. Well, it was a deep fake or someone took over my Twitter account. How many times have we heard that excuse? You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah, seriously. Now, it's also it's opening up a new avenue around like what tools or technology technologies are going to be coming available to be able to distinguish actual deep fakes from real video. Uh, uh, curious on what you think of, of that kind of being a new market possibly that's going to be opening up. I've seen there's some companies that are already starting to, to be able to do that for folks. I mean, I'm sure there will be, Marty's going to have something to say, uh, certainly about the technology side of this house, but you know, the best prevention to these problems is an awareness um, uh, and, and sort of standard operating procedure inside of a company where there mm -hmm. are potential for um, these types of authentications to cause, um, uh, you know, security issues, right? So it's uh, constantly alerting your employees that not everything they think they believe, they think is, is real may be real, right? Which is not a bad way for us to act in, in society, right? <laughs> uh, uh, if it wasn't for, I mean, you know, how many deep fakes are there of lots of other celebrities? I think in this case, it was, you know, the mania around this particular person that, you know, that, that led to this explosion, right? So mm -hmm. um, prevention around education is is ultimately going to beat any pixel dropping, authentication, crypto-y, whatever comes yeah. down the path, which is probable. Marty? Yeah, and, and let's just keep in mind, as soon as somebody makes a detector, the people who want to do the bad stuff are going to take that detector and figure out a way to break it or get around it. And it's going to become an arms race. Um, yeah. Just like anything does when you have nefarious characters using technology to do bad things, we find ways to stop the bad things. And that just becomes more fuel for those people that have find new ways to get around it. So it, Ken's advice is spot on, you know, keep the human in the loop, be sensible, you know, educate your your people accordingly to say you know don't believe everything you see yeah it's like when you when we get a text message from our ceo that he's in a closed door meeting and and needs you to, like i don't think he's doing that. The end of that one yep uh, so and and for the sake of it by the way for the rest rest of this uh, episode it's now travis kelsey's girlfriend <laughs>
is that's how we'll <laughs> that's how we'll say. Uh, so to kind of wrap up, I'd be curious on what, what are some positive use cases in general I mean, and even for businesses of yeah, deepfakes? Look, there's lots, there's lots of positives around this, you know, I mean, um, not to crush the modeling industry as a, as a, as a group or the other industry we're talking about, but like, if you can generate, there's lots of stories now where, where, you know, sort of models are being replaced by generative AI versions mm -hmm. of a person that doesn't exist, right? And, or, and, and the, I mean, those models are probably pretty easy to work with. And you can pick the exact size and dimension. <laughs> and all this, you can put different colors, you know, outfits on them and everything. So that's like, there's, there's some, there's some, now again, when, when you start blending the likeness, there's a lot of IP related issues. And of course, like with our, with many of the companies that, that we work with, I mean, look how much easier it might be for um, to create a uh, standard operating procedure user manual for um, you know a respective company. You know, you can you can quickly create videos that would otherwise be really expensive and difficult uh, by using these same technologies that you know let Obama uh, endorse Trump could be used to have. Um, you know, Elon give his his people a, a you know intro to intro to SpaceX. Yeah, and, and could and let's you, think in the in the entertainment industry, Elon. you could use the this technology to literally reprise the roles of people who either aren't alive anymore or have completely aged out of that role. You know, and I I, I think didn't they do that in one of the latest Star Wars movies where they had one of the characters, um, I think it was, um, I think it was Carrie Fisher's character because she died before the end and they used, I mean, it was basically a deep fake, a, a digital, you know, Carrie Fisher instead of having, she was dead, you know, she couldn't what act anymore. What's that called again when they do that? Is it CGI? I, I mean, it, it is CGI, thing? but it's, it's to a whole new level in my opinion yeah. at that point. Do you need to creating a deep fake, like you mentioned, like the Elon one, does it need to be initially like, like, I'm wondering if like a CEO does a, a welcome video that they want to do to all their new hires that they all go watch. And then there's like, oh, we need to tweak it. Does it the first one need to be the actual CEO? And then you can use the or could they do it from scratch? Anyway? I've seen deep fakes of people taking a picture of the Mona Lisa and then which is a static picture that's 500 years old and turning it into a video of her talking. So That's right. you don't, I'm pretty sure Da Vinci invented a lot of things, but not a video camera. So. <laughs> hey, that's a neat educational aspect of that. I saw with deep fakes of like being able to like, imagine if you could create a, a video that you actually interact with the Mona Lisa talking about the history of the Mona Lisa and like you get to actually yeah. ask questions to it. Whole and new like, level like, to the hall of presidents at Disney world. Oh, yeah. seriously, I'm in. <laughs> I love that. Uh, there was even, um, I know there's a museum actually in Florida that has the artist introduce all of the art pieces in a, in there that kind of deep fake. Like, yeah. so it's pretty neat. Um, any last thoughts on deep fakes overall? I, I'm curious and, and I don't have an answer to this, but if you're a company that says, Hey, I'm going to help you identify them where, how is the law going to interpret that and how are liability going to be handled if I miss one? You know, is that my fault as the company providing it? Or can I say, ah, you know, the technology keeps changing and I can hide behind that. I think you see uh, a lot of lawyers get into this and the because it is important. And, and Ken mentioned another thing about, you know, IP. Um, open AI is coming under fire for basically stealing people's IP to use it to train their models. I mean, the same thing's going to happen with deepfakes. You know, you stole my image, you stole my likeness without my permission. And and maybe that's what Taylor's going to do is sue some of these, if she can identify the perpetrators, sue some of these people for taking her image and using it in a way that she didn't give permission for. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that for sure. I mean, I wonder if it's similar to companies that do cybersecurity analysis is for other entities and like if it's the same like what's their risk from a, a legal perspective on mm -hmm. like if if they yeah. miss something like is, assuming they have some levels of of risk there so it's i will it'd be interesting to see how that plays out with with deep fakes yeah. for sure 
Um, Love to hear. Awesome. Has any comments it, on that. It, 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 it's an expensive way to try to make, you know, it's like the Nigerian Prince letter, except really, really expensive version of that, right? So you've mm-hmm. got to, you know, maybe maybe you're bringing down the sucker, the 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 how difficult it is to. You probably make make a your bigger pool of suckers to pull from if you're if you're sort of uh, deep fake if you've got a deep fake um, what would you call that a uh, like a dangling a, a hook in front of a, or some sort of bait right it's but it's mm-hmm. the Nigerian Prince version of the world you just got to educate people yep. yeah that's uh, by far I saw every article I was reading about it was really saying exactly exactly that on education's the key thing for corporations to make sure that they have process in place and they're teaching their people what to look out for to avoid any security risks overall um awesome well appreciate it again coming on it could almost be like multi-factor identification could kind of almost do it like was that was that really you text yes like it's like you can fix it real quick you know exactly hey business idea ken we'll we'll cut (laughs) that part out Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on again. Apologies to everybody on the video side to have to look at my horrendous eyes. Hopefully it will be uh, healed, but I did not want to already miss week two. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, I should have gone the glasses route. <laughs> Thanks again, all. Uh, tune in next week for uh, AI Chatter. Bye. See you next week. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.